So hi guys, just a quick video. So we're all on the lockdown thing still. Um, some of us are lucky enough to be near the countryside, so if you are going for a walk, take your camera with you. If you've got a macro lens, use it. Um, amazing bit of kit really. It uh, allows you to get closer to wildlife, give you some really nice close-up shots of bugs, butterflies, uh, flowers, and interesting things like that. So, you know, I've got a 90mm Sony G lens here. Absolutely really big, good bit of kit. Um, but you don't necessarily need a macro lens. If you've got a, I don't know, this one is a 24-105 to 105 lens. At 105, you can actually focus quite close. So, and with the um, sort of sensors we have nowadays, we can actually crop in quite well. I mean, I always suggest that you don't crop in too much because you'll start to get pixelation and you can see the details not quite as good as it would have been if you sort of uh, utilised a macro lens properly. But if you can get quite close to something, and sometimes actually the macro lens is too, um, at one to one is way too magnified uh, and you actually have to back out anyway. So sometimes I use my 135 G Master. That's very good. It gets down to about 70 something, 75 centimetres at 135, so it's quite good at, um, at doing things like butterflies and, uh, and dragonflies, stuff like that, if you can get close enough. Um, but the party piece I'm going to talk about is the Lauer 24mm um, uh, probe macro lens, which comes in a really good case and it's a bit specialist. So I'm going to show you what, uh, what that can do in a second. The, it's a bit of a, it's a challenging lens to use is what I was going to say. And um, I've had it for over a year now, um, and I've not used it as much as I should have done, really. It's, it's definitely a specialist lens. It's definitely difficult to use and get good uh, images or footage from when you first start to use it. I'm slowly getting there now, now I've started to use it again uh, properly. And um, certain things you use handheld, sometimes I use it handheld, sometimes I put it on an electric slider. So depending on what I'm actually trying to do, um, it's it's quite good. So I'm going to show you what I've done to it because I've actually a couple of hacks. So if you've actually got the Lauer 24mm um, probe lens or you're thinking about buying one, um, just take consideration it's a challenging lens to use. Take that into first consideration um, and also there's a couple of little hacks I've done to mine which actually allow it, it become a little bit more usable. Um, a couple of little safety modifications I've done as well to sort of save a couple of little bits on there if you're having to uh, drop it or anything like that. So um, other than that, let's have a look and I'll show you what's in the case. All right guys, so this is the case that the uh, Laura comes in and it's one of those, it is a lens that you kind of do need to keep in this case if you're utilizing it because it's definitely, um, it's not fragile, but it's one of, those, one of those lenses you're not gonna use that often unless you're using it every day for a particular job, um, but you don't use it every day. So it's worth keeping it itself in its case um, basically what I've got in mind, you'll see a couple of things on there in a second, but um, basically I've got a, I always keep a um, power bank with it. Um, it comes with a cable, which is, I've got a slightly different cable, and obviously this is the lens, and you can already see, um, mine has a couple of modifications to it. Two very, very cheap and affordable modifications. Um, that being this thing here, which is a just a um, aluminium mount. But what I have done, I've wrapped some insulating white insulation tape around, which means I can actually rotate it. So, which you'll see in a second, the reason why. Lens cap I also wrapped in white, just so I can see it. Sometimes you put things down and it, it's disappeared. Um, so that's on there. Um, you may have noticed, obviously, some things like, um, say if you've got an Apple, Apple Mac, um, you can get the obviously got magnetic mounts. So what I've actually done is I've actually fitted an adapter, eBay jobby, um, to a USB-C cable, and it just connects. So if it's in, so the problem is, if you've got it on the camera and you've got your power bank in your pocket, and you put the lens down, oh, it comes off. But what I wouldn't want to do is if that's plugged in normally, you may you may break that mount or damage the cable or or something like that. But also, it gives it a bit more water resistance as well. So it's less likely to get any water in there because it's a nice tight fit. The lens itself is waterproof to this point. So it's waterproof, completely submergible. Submersible, rather. Um, up to that point. 
Okay. Um, the other modification is, so there's only a couple of mods, nothing crazy. Um, it's just a big fat zip tie. So if you're used to using this for video, it just means you can get a nice smooth focus going on. Like that. It's actually quite difficult to do it like that naturally. So I just put a nice big zip tie on. If I don't want it on, I just slide it off and it's out of the way. It just goes on again. Like so. Sorted. Um, let's say it's f14, which is his widest aperture. But that's just down to the length of the the, uh, the actual uh, lens itself. It's very small, but I tell you what, it is one hell of a bit of kit when you get get using it. Um, obviously, once you power this up, let's take the lens cap off, um, and I'll show you. Um, the other reason I've got this power bank as well is um, there you go. So imagine you're having that in your pocket, you turn around or something like that and the cable gets snagged and it's off again and it's not, not a problem at all. Straight on again. So it works really, really well. Um, took me a while to find the right one because obviously you have to get one that's got a bend in it because this is the way this uh, sort of flange here happens. So to get it in there was quite the right one. This little bit of rubber here, just in case for bangs really, just a knox, anti-knox in between. Just It's just a rubber um, rubber mount. Uh, not a rubber band, like a big thick rubber band, um, which works quite well, just to protect it from bashing about really, other than that. Um, this lens is absolutely awesome. The other thing I have done as well is, if you've ever heard of Rain-X, which is a windscreen water repellent, and there's other versions of it as well, um, I coated the front element, um, where the LEDs are, with Rain-X, and what it does is helps stop water droplets and water marks on the front of the lens. And uh, that's quite an important thing because it does show up. Um, you've got to imagine the magnification of this lens is two to one. Um, so basically it can show up the watermarks once the water dries. If you put it into a pond or something and you bring it back out. Um, I just found that having Rain-X on it, you can really feel how much smoother the glass is, the front element is, with having that on there. So that makes a massive, massive difference as well. Other than that, this, this lens um, is about £1,600. So it's not cheap, it's way above the average macro lens. Ma ma macro lenses are actually relatively good value. Um, a 50mm or a 70mm, um, you're looking at sort of anywhere between £300 and £600. The 90mm is about 1000 or just under, um, I think. And then obviously there's other ones in between that, so depending on what make you're using. Um, but the Lara ones, I know there's other makes as well. Sorry, other versions of the Lara lenses, they've got 100mm I think, and there's even a wide angle uh, shorter one as well. But this probe lens is a little bit special, so it means you can go into um, places that you can't normally with any other lens, which is really, really good. Um, like you may have seen my toilet roll um, uh, double O bug off, or whatever it was called, um, a video for the obviously the, the toilet roll piss take. And it's things like that you can do, it just makes it really unique. The fact that you can stick it down through a hole under the floorboards, for example, and have a look at what's underneath your floorboards, the spiders, um, you can get into. Um, much closer spots, especially with um, wildlife actually, with flies and things like that, I found that you can actually go much closer because you're so far away from them and the lens doesn't really seem to bother them, even the lights, they're not even that worried. So but there we go, that's what I just thought I'd show you what's in my case as such and the reason why I've got this, so it basically means you know you can tilt it, if you're hand holding, if you're hand holding it means you can go at an angle, or it sort of supports it, or it's actually quite a good, almost like a machine gun kind of stow, and actually quite a good stable way of holding it. Um, but mainly, it means if I'm down on the ground or on the on the thing like that, I'm not dragging the the nose anymore on the actual uh, thing. So it works really quite nicely. Um, and the other thing I work as well, which I use, which I'm not going to put it in, is a modified version of a slider. So I've got a rat rig. Slider, not very expensive, um, really quite good. And I've got an and I'm not sure if I'm gonna say it right, and uh, um, adjustable uh, mount here, a tripod. You can lift it up and down. Uh, the camera sits on there, and obviously, it's electronic, so you plug that into the other side of the power bank. So I've got two, well, you've got three slots, but two can be in use at once. So that means I can power this, obviously, power the lighting for the, the lens. I've also, if you notice, I've got this thing up this end. So 
I've got another roller set for the uh, um, where is it? Let's go up. For the slider, sorry. Um, basically, you've got quite a lot of play. There's um, not play, but there can be a bit of um, vibration. So what I've actually done is imagine the camera's sat on there. This has now got support. This end. I thought you can see that. I can now got support, but it's up and it can go up and down as well. So when this end slides, that end slides as well. Obviously, you start at the other end. Um, but generally, you can't really go. You don't normally slide very far. So normally, you're inside something, and you pull back out. It's not too bad anyway. I don't have to use that. I don't have to use that bit. Um, it can just be removed quite simply. But it just allows that to move at the same time. It just gives you really nice, really smooth footage. Um, especially if I clamp that down, um, but you know, it's not to say it doesn't have to be used. The camera just taken out of the way; it's not a problem at all. And all this is is an L bracket off the camera, so I bolted down this end. Rather than the base of the camera being here, it's actually now straight onto uh, onto the slider on one of the spare spare things here. So works really, really well, and it's given me some good uh, footage. Plus, it's quite um, compact. So this is a sixty centimeter. Uh, slider. The lens itself, I think, is forty, yeah, forty centimeters long. Um, like I say, it comes in a good case, and just the small modifications like that little lever there. Just use your thumb, and because you've got a little bit of flex on the zip tie there, it gives you a smoother way of focusing. The only thing I wish they could have done was put a clicker or non-clicker on the f-stop. F because I tend to, I do have knocked this quite a few times and suddenly realised, well, you know, why am I getting not shots are quite good? Because, you know, I knocked it to F14 or F40 by accident or something. And trust me, there's not a lot of light getting in this lens. So, you know, you've got to be very careful on your settings. Um, but other than that, it's a fabulous bit of kit and works as a, as a setup like this, obviously plus a camera, it works very, very well. And you've got your controller here, which just plugs in. It's obviously USB powered. This means you can go backwards and forwards at whatever speed you want the uh, uh, sliders to do. So it works really, really well. Um, it's just a case of thinking about your shots and doing something a little bit unique. Um, you know, just thinking differently to what you would normally be doing with um, this sort of thing. And maybe just doing something that you haven't really seen before, like the bubbles, the bubbles uh, the video I did with it uh, last week. Um, actually being inside a bubble as such, blowing the bubble so it's stuck to the end of the lens, um, attached itself around the outside of the lens, so basically the lens inside was seeing inside the bubble, and it was quite an interesting uh, experiment. It took me ages to try and get the bubbles to stick to the end of the lens. Eventually they did, um, and I've got a few other ideas that I might be able to advance on that situation, but uh, yeah. So anyway, I'm just going to take a couple of shots now with this uh, lens. I'm going to set it up and show you kind of a couple of different variations of what you can do with this video and stills um, and then go from there well guys so the camera is now set up and I've got a banana so I've got an idea to do something with a banana so it's kind of in a ripped open bag so it kind of gives you the appearance of being still in the bag which I'll, I'll shut that down a bit in a minute so it looks like there's a banana in a bag um, I'll pull it out and then I'm going to do a further bits to it just a bit of interest something a little bit different um, and uh, we'll go from there. Not sure if it's going to work 100% perfectly but um, we shall see, we shall see. So this first um, little clip here didn't really um, do itself any favours. It works, it's smooth and everything but it wasn't what I was really looking for. So unfortunately during, to the, during these um, sort of uh, photography things you have to sometimes make a sacrifice. Mm. and eat some of the food to make it obviously uh, the next stage well, good job of like banana really isn't it so anyway so this is what I was actually aiming for in the first place but I just thought I'd mess around a little bit beforehand is this shot here so most of the banana be has been eaten a little bit left at the end and basically the probe lens is inside the banana skin and it just pulls back out through and uh, works quite well, it's not bad at all. 
obviously shot in a small studio area um, and this one here is a match being lit but unfortunately I was too close and as you can see uh, when it goes it actually fogs up the front of the lens causing actually not a bad effect it kind of looks a bit interesting a bit misty um, and this shot here is obviously me further back at this time so it didn't do uh, as bad but obviously nice and sharp looks quite interesting um, background could have been better obviously but this is just just for examples and just experimentation purposes uh, and having the matches thrown around everywhere worked quite well as well and obviously I just blew the match out before it got too close uh, to igniting the rest of them because that would have been quite an interesting uh, moment so this one is two shots so it's one is inside the matchbox with a hole in the end then I just turned it around and butted the lens right up and pulled away and that's how it works it's like it's come straight through Right, what I'm doing guys is I'm actually going to be filming down a packet of spaghetti, dried spaghetti, um, inside. So I tried sliding the lens in um, straight away and it just didn't, wouldn't have it. The bag was so full. So I've taken some of the spaghetti out and I've actually filled it back over the top. So I've slid the lens in, uh, done one pass with only pasta below it kind of thing and around the side of it. And now I've put some over the top. That's what I'm doing now anyway. So I'm sliding some more in over the top of the uh, lens to hopefully give us some interesting and I can see now on this screen here obviously on the back of the A7R4 it's actually looking quite good uh, just trying to get as much in there as possible to give me a good smooth full looking which that does look pretty good now. The thing I'm going to do is turn the ISO up a little bit. Um, and I've just filmed this from the inside of the uh, the lens as well, so I don't know what it'll look like coming in, if you could actually see it or not. But um, anyway, what we're going to do now is do a pass and uh, see what it looks like. So, right, that's stopped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, hold the back of the bag, and just take it in quite a long way, up to the end of... There we go, right at the end. That looks so cool. So, right, uh, let's look at the focus. About that. That looks quite interesting. So I'll just take a picture. There we go. Done. Kind of looks like a, I don't know, kind of like a flower almost or something like that. But right. So what I'm going to do now is um, push record. See what it looks like. See if it looks bright enough. Up the brightness very slightly. And uh, I'm going to actually going to hold the bag like so. And I'm just going to bring it out. A steady speed until we exit the bag. And the pasta should. No, it's left actually left a, uh, a mark. There you go. And that is the pasta. So let's take a shot of that. Just doing a two second timer just to make sure I'm not touching anything. There's no wobbling around on the table or anything like that. Have a quick look. Looks good. So that's just a couple of ways of doing some interesting things. Like any household item really. I mean, bag of pasta. You know, going down the inside of it, you can do a bag of crisps, you could do, um, I mean, I've seen inside sweet peppers, so you basically go inside with the uh, uh, sweet pepper, so you make a small hole in it and go inside and back out, looks quite cool. Um, but that, having that light on the front is amazing, it really does make a difference. Because um, if we don't have the light on, this is what it looks like, it's very dark, it's not going to work. Um, obviously got lighting on the outside which obviously helps a little bit but 
um, you know hardly any really compared to the light having you know at the front of the lens so um, makes a huge difference there anyway guys don't forget to click the subscribe button or the, um, the little notification bell as well I'm still getting to grips with this lens even though a year down the line obviously I've not used it a lot and that's the trouble um, start to mess around with it more start to have more ideas having a bit of fun with it um, and just messing about really be nice to take it out somewhere but obviously at the moment we're a little bit limited on what we can do there's lots of tadpoles there's um, frogs or things like that they, you know it's it's a wonderful bit of equipment if you've got one um, just a case of playing with it and uh, messing around but obviously if you have got a macro lens um, or even a good zoom lens you can still get quite close to things so just mess around with that experiment and um, keep snapping and that's the only way of really getting better so you know putting the hours in of experimentation and practice and practice and practice and practice you never get anything right per you know first time um, you know it's just the way way it is you know it's just practice 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 and eventually you get um, get to know exactly what you want and know how to do it a lot a lot quicker than you would do when you first started kind of thing so hey guys this is just a, a couple of CDs I'm actually just pulling through a couple of CDs there it just has a bit of interest unfortunately the dust kept settling I couldn't get rid of it and it's obviously static because it's nylon or whatever um, but it just gives you another view there another idea um, anyway guys don't forget to subscribe click the little, little notification bell as well and I shall see you soon uh, for some more videos especially this lens here